According to the New York Times, I voted for 94, six against, and four absence past the ordination of gay clergy in the Presbyterian Church. Along with this, ordination views of LGBT Christian clergy in the United States mainline denominations has been in the past three years and it has in the past 10 decades. Are you ashamed of that, Matt? Pope Francis says he will not judge gay priests for their sexual orientation. Here's what the Pope said uh, on the way home from Brazil. If someone is gay and he searches for the Lord and has goodwill, who am I to judge? His predecessor, Pope Benedict XVI, signed a document that said men with deep-rooted homosexual tendencies should not be priests. But Pope Francis says gay clergymen should be forgiven of their sins and their sins forgotten. Huffington Post says that a historical change is taking place in Christian denominations. From churches who have already changed their views or guidelines to churches on the, uh, or uh, guidelines that are on the boat rocking back and forth. As we can see in the Catholic Church, you have one Pope uh, who says, no, this shouldn't be, compared to one Pope who says, it's okay now, we're not going to judge. Uh, the, the biggest thing is Presbyterian Church. An old amendment the Presbyterian Church USA book back in 1997 says, those who are called into office in the church are led to leave a life of obedience to scripture. Among these standards is requirement to live either in fidelity with the covenant of marriage between a man and a woman. However, in 2012, uh, a big uproar took place in the Presbyterian Church where this was changed uh, to that vote of 94 and six against. The new amendment says this, it says, shall examine each candidate's calling, gifts, gifts preparation, and stability for the res responsibilities of office. So in the new Presbyterian outlook from two, 1997 to 2012, they took out anything to do with marriage or uh, between a man and a woman or even the fertility of being single and uh, having chastity. And I see this in my own home. Uh, where I'm from in Pennsylvania, we have a Presbyterian church back home that uh, was part of that vote. And then also another main line of denomination is the Mennonite church. Uh, but before we get into that, Michael Adil, the executive director of More Life Presbyterian, says we are entering a new era of quality. And then Paul Maury, a 49-year-old gay clergyman who was the first one to become a gay clergy ordained in New York City, says Presbyterians are buzzing everywhere around the country for the new vote. Mennonite Church USA, since 1995, uh, the issue arose in 1995 for Mennonite Church. It arose because of a church called Faith Mennonite Church in Minnesota. Uh, the church wanted to become, have a gay pastor and it split down the middle before it, and it split down the middle because one church was for it and the other one wasn't. Um, in 2009, a letter was written uh, for, <coughs> a letter was, the letter says that the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and trans transgender people fall within God's grace, and the church not exclude anyone, including their pastors. Uh, this was written by Paul Nis or Weldon Nisley, a pastor in Seattle. Um, but then you go back to 1999, again, where they're on the boat rocking back and forth. What should we do? What shouldn't we do? Uh, 1999 is when the Midnight USA and the General Conference came together. And when this happened, they had a 10-year vow of silence and this topic wasn't allowed to be brought up. Um, it wasn't brought up again until 2009 at the Midnight USA Conference uh, in Columbus. And uh, at this time, it was spoken about in big numbers. That's when you find uh, Pink Meadow came out at that time, and Pink Meadow was all for it. Um, and so at that time in Columbus, you see people running around with t-shirts on that have sayings of, Inclusive of Mennonite, ask me how. And so from 1999 to 09, it was quiet, and now we have a huge uproar about this in the Mennonite Church. Uh, Joan Kreider, a member of the Mennonite Church, said it like this. Uh, Looking historically, there is no reason to think history will take care of the problem. That is the issue, which is definitely a problem for the Mennonite Church in 2009, but no longer be an issue in 2010. I mean, she believes if it's a huge issue now, it won't be in 20 more years from now. Uh, the Mennonite Church today still doesn't know what to do with this issue. Uh, there's a 
one of my home churches back home, uh, part of our conference. Um, I stood up with another church on this issue right now that the church wants to bring in a homosexual pastor, and but the Allegheny Conference, Men at USA, doesn't believe in that, so is it going to give them accreditations? Uh, they did it anyway. The Men at USA kind of just swept it under the table, but didn't know about it. And so they're not dealing with it um, because they don't know how to, and so they're still on the boat. Um, in summary, we look at two different denominations that make up a large group of people here in the United States. Uh, one who struggles on how to handle the situation, what the Presbyterians did in 1997 to now, where they're all for it. And then we look at the Mennonite Church, who in 1999 struggled with it and still struggles with it today. Um, so in conclusion, Acts 5, 38, verse 39 says, in this plan or this understanding of, of human origin, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. In this case, you may even be fighting against God.